Today we're gonna do some rebuild on some Riverside three-piece mesh wheels. Got these from Three Piece USA. Uh, these are really beat up. They get a lot of uh, flake going on with it. Some of the magnesium is corroding underneath the, the face of it. But it's alright, we'll get... My camera quality in the beginning I think is not gonna be very good because I just got a brand new camera here, but stick around please because it does get better at the end. So if you're having trouble with the 8mm socket, you can get yourself a 516 socket. It fits a little bit tighter on it, so there's left movement for it. Gonna remove the valve stem here. Just unscrew it with an Allen key, take it out from both sides. Make sure you don't lose the O-ring. You can look at the back, how dirty it is here. It's all cruddy and crusty. We'll get this sorted out, don't worry. Taking off all these wheel weights, we don't need these. It looks like they just didn't want to take off any of the wheel weights here, so they just kept them on. Okay, so now that we got all of the bolts removed from it, we're gonna take out the seal here so we can break these into three pieces. So this is what's called a sandwich style. So we got the lip, uh, the face, and then the barrel. You see right, the face is right in the middle. So that means we got two seals to break. And I'm not sure if the camera can really pick it up, but you can see the one right here. Uh, maybe, and then the one to the left of it. We're gonna try to break both of those. We're gonna go and take I'm gonna take uh, a razor, an exacto knife, a box cutter, whatever you want, and go straight down it on the other side, and then go straight down on the other side too until we can break it. And boom, there we go. So there's the lip. Place that over there. Get that guy out of here. I don't want to scratch that one up. And we'll now just try to get the face off. Ah, there's so much dirt in this thing. Is this is breaking. There we go. <clears throat> All right, now comes the, the fun part is we gotta get all of that silicone off on all three of these. Oh. Now we're just gonna grab our razor over here. We're gonna go straight down, get as much off that top as we can. So if you can't get it off any of the, if you can't get off all the silicone here, I'll show you later in the video how to get it all off. And we're just gonna clean the back of this side. Get some of this dirt off here. We're gonna use some sponges and some Brillo pads. Yeah. We're not gonna end up polishing this. This is just a barrel. As opposed to any like aircraft stripper or anything like that, any paint strippers, we're actually going to be using methylene chloride. Uh, it works a hundred times better. This is chemicals banned in some states uh, for risk of uh, cancer if it's exposed for too long. Uh, but luckily I have a chemist that I can borrow uh, that has lots of years of experience using this as a film stripper. So I'm pretty confident with this. What you can't see here is we have two fans. We have a push-pull fan coming out from our right to our left, alleviating the air. Uh, so you can see this was only after about a minute, just soaked in it and just takes everything off. Uh, we have a tarp placed over it because this stuff does evaporate at room temperature. Methylene chloride will also cause silicone to swell. Silicone to come off of whatever it's uh, currently stuck to, 
So if you couldn't get it off all with a razor blade before, just put some of this on it and it'll come right off. You can see in this one, he bring it closer to the camera. And you can see there's some corrosion on the magnesium there, but we'll take That's care of that with some sanding. Yeah. We're going to be using Cerakote here as opposed to some powder coat or just paint. Uh, it's kind of a mix of the two. Uh, I think it's technically a, a ceramic coat, but you do have to bake it, so you need to do you do need an oven or some sort of heat source to keep it at 400 degrees for about two hours. Uh, shake this thing for about 10 minutes. There is a hardener that they give for you. Uh, Cerakote's pretty relatively cheap, and um, sure. it's about $60, I think, for the bottle, and it does way more than just the four wheels that we had. Depending on what Cerakote product you buy, it will tell you what size uh, mesh strainer to put this through. So we're just doing some test sprays here to make sure we got a uh, good thickness and it's good. Uh, we're just doing this to see if the viscosity is all right. This, this stuff was surprisingly easy to spray. Uh, this was my first time spraying any of this and it came out almost flawlessly, about 99% flawless. It was really easy to use. I highly recommend this to anybody who wants to try it. It's relatively cheap. You can get smaller ones than that. the pint that I had. You can get them in like, uh, I think 8 ounces, 16, and then 64. Always get some extra eyes in here to make sure you didn't miss anything because we got some crap lighting. So when you do bake this, uh, you're going to need either a convection oven or a box, like I tried to make one, but it didn't end up working out. Uh, I tried to make a an insulation box out of uh, home insulation, but it just didn't work out, wouldn't hold up 400 degrees. Uh, this oven was actually on its way out, they were replacing this the next day, so I didn't have any issue with abusing their oven before they got rid of it. Yeah, yeah pretty good. To give it a nice gloss here, we're going to use the same two-part clear coat that I had used in a previous video here. Uh, same type here is 2K clear coat. I'm going to shake it for about 10 minutes after we uh, break the seal on the bottom. I got lazy. I didn't want to cover this up or put a tarp back up to to do clear coat on this, so I gotta make sure I don't got any bugs that are flying around in there because I don't want to seal them into the into the clear coat. Now onto the reassembly. We're gonna put some blue Loctite on every single bolt that we put back in here. 
Uh, I did end up reusing the hardware, uh, just because hardware is really expensive for wheels. I didn't know that going into it, and the hardware that I had was also pretty good. Uh, just the bolts alone were, you know, if you were to buy them somewhere else, it was, since there's 48 bolts on each wheel, each bolt was about to come out to be a dollar, so I didn't want to spend $200 in just hardware. So, any, any of the ones that did look like they had to be replaced, I did replace them. When you torque them down, you want to torque them down to about uh, 20 foot-pounds. Now when we do the seal, uh, we're going to go back and deliver it to each seal here. We're going to do the left side and the right side of it. And then we're going to uh, smoosh them together with some sort of whatever you want to use as an applicator, whether it be a, a, a plastic spoon, a tongue depressor, your own finger, anything. <laughs> What I had end up using for this was just metal to metal silicone. You can pick it up at Home Depot. So I am going to include some some more high res photos here so you can get a better shot of it. If you liked if you like this video, I got others on this build here, so please follow. I'm posting about once a week, I hope, if I can maintain that.